In this brief video, we're going to cover Dirac notation. This is an overview of what we've already done in lectures, and I'm providing it in the hope that you find it useful. Up until now, um, in the course FAS2222, you will have talked about the wave function to describe a quantum system, and we typically write that as psi of x, or in three dimensions, as psi of r. Psi of x represents the probability amplitude to observe the system, so if it is a particle, then that would be observing the particle at a point x. So in this sense, it's actually rather restrictive notation. You would have to have a table of all of the different probability amplitudes at every point in space in order to have a complete description of your system. Dirac notation notes the state of the system in a different way. We write the state of the system as psi inside an angled bracket known as a ket. In general, we're putting what is known inside the ket, and this describes the entire system. It describes everything about it. The ket is a complex vector. It's a member of a linear vector space. Uh, the dimension of that space is often infinite. So if you want to write it in terms of a position, then that may well be an infinite number of members. If we want to evaluate a probability amplitude from a ket, then we put what we want to know in a related symbol known as a bra. When you put a bra and a ket together, then you get a bracket. This is a rather feeble joke by Dirac who introduced this idea. So if, for instance, I wanted to find the probability amplitude of a state psi, that's ket psi, at a point x in space, then we would write bra x ket psi. And this relates to our familiar wave function as psi of x. The bracket is a complex number. It's a probability amplitude, which you've already seen before. You can take its complex conjugate. Um, you can write that as bra x ket psi with a star above it. Um, and that's equal to bra psi ket x, which is of course equal to psi star of x. You can see from this that bra psi, the, um, the that bra psi is a Hermitian conjugate of ket psi. And we use the dagger to represent the Hermitian conjugate. Similarly, ket psi is the Hermitian conjugate of bra psi, and we're using the Hermitian conjugates because psi is a vector, so we have to take a transpose. If you want to think of three-dimensional vectors, then you would write the bra as a row vector and the ket as a column vector. We can replace integrals between wave functions using Dirac notation. So where you previously would have written integral psi star of r, chi of r, dr, as being the in overlap between the two wave functions, we replace that with bra psi ket chi. If we use operators to act on the wave functions, we then act on the ket, and they act to the right. So if I write a hat psi, um, where remember the hat means that you have you're, ha you're using an operator, we can actually take the a inside the ket, because we're thinking about the result of acting on the system with the operator a, and that will always give another ket, which in this case we're going to write as chi. If we wanted to act to the left, then we would need to use a Hermitian conjugate, and you can see this by considering taking the operator a inside the bra psi, you would then need a hat dagger psi, and you're going to think about this in problem sheet one, which has already been posted. If you want to write an expectation value, then you take the bracket between psi's and you bracket the operator that you're considering. So in this case, we would have bra psi acting on the operator a, acting on ket psi, which in second year notation we would have written as the integral over all space of psi star a hat psi. If you want to think about the orthonormality of eigenfunctions, um, then if we've got two eigenfunctions, let's say phi n and phi m, then we write that in normal notation, in position notation, as the integral between the two. Um, but in Dirac notation, it's simply bra phi n ket phi m. Um, and that can be written very simply as delta subscript nm. And that's the Dirac delta. So if the two subscripts are the same, delta is equal to 1. If they differ, delta is equal to 0. We can define the Hermitian conjugate um, by writing psi 1, or bra psi 1, then the operator a hat, and then ket psi 2, and then we can take the operator into the bra, so we have a dagger acting on psi 1 in the bra, and then we're taking the contraction with psi 2, um, and that's equal to the complex conjugate of bra psi 2, a acting on psi 1. 
you should go away and try and work through other simple quantum mechanical properties using Dirac notation and ensure that you're happy with that because this is something we will use extensively throughout the course.